Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our series on derivatives. If you haven't already, make sure to check out some of my previous videos. They're linked in the little eye in the corner, it'll get you there. Otherwise, we are specifically talking about trigonometry, so sine, cosine, and tangent, and what their derivatives look like. So let's go ahead and dive into it. If f of x equals sine of x, what is the derivative of sine of x? So I have a little reminder on what derivatives even mean. So derivatives describe the slope of the tangent line at any given point x, y. I have a mini example of this so we can see really what it looks like. So f of x equals 2 plus x squared. If I were to take the derivative of this, I get f prime of x is just equal to 2x. This helps me find the tangent line at any point, and I have a specific point right here. So what I mean by that is we have the form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And that's going to be the line that just skims the function at that point. So I want to find m, right? Because I already have x1 and y1. So in order to find m, I'm just going to plug in my value at the derivative. And that gives me 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. So when I plug all of this in, I get y minus 3 equals 2 times x minus 1. And so that's what I mean by the derivative helps us find the slope at the, of the tangent line at any given point. I could plug in any point right there, and boom, I already got the slope. So if I write this out all fancy here, and we get the tangent line of 2x plus x squared at 1, 3 is 2x plus 1. So let's go ahead and look at our actual function that we're working with today, sine of x. So if I think about the slope, I have that the slope of the tangent line at 0, 0 is going to look something like this. It just skims it at the point. So it looks like I have a positive slope, right? And then once I hit this point right here, all of a sudden I have a slope of 0 because it's not increasing or decreasing. Now if I move down the function, I would have a slope that looks kind of like this. It just skims right through. But notice now, I have a negative slope. That slope is negative. So actually, kind of tricky. I have cosine of x with sine of x on this next graph. Cosine of x defines the slope of sine of x at all points. Notice right here, we talked about how the slope of the tangent line is neither positive or negative. It's just 0. That means our function cosine of x is actually 0. And it does that at every single point. So right here, right when we have a slope of 0, cosine of x is actually at 0. When we have an increasing tangent line, our cosine of x is positive. So that actually tells us that the derivative of sine of x is actually equal to cosine of x. Cosine of x describes the slope of the tangent line of sine at any given point. So here we want to talk about what is the derivative of cosine of x. And for very similar reasons, it's actually going to be negative sine of x. And we're going to go ahead and look at our graph. So cosine of x is in the blue. When our function is not changing at all, it has a slope of 0, then our negative sine of x is actually equal to 0. Same thing right here. We have a value of 0. And right here, we have a value of 0. Now, the reason it has to be negative is because it has to go along with what the slope is doing. So in this region, my function is decreasing, right? And that's why my negative sine of x is in the negative area. Same thing on the other side, our function is increasing, increasing, increasing. And so my negative sine of x has to be positive. Positive associates with increasing, negative associates with decreasing. And so that's how we got these derivatives. There's a whole limit definition that goes with it, and I'm not going to do it because I'm lazy. Sorry, guys. We can use both of these now to derive the derivative of tangent of x. I can rewrite tangent of x as sine of x over cosine of x. And what I'm going to apply next is the quotient rule. So I have my function in the numerator, and I have a function in my denominator. I'm going to go ahead and write those out. Alrighty, so we need to go ahead and fill in the derivatives, and that's what we just learned. So the derivative of sine of x is equal to cosine of x. 
and the derivative of cosine of x is equal to negative sine of x. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and take the actual derivative. So I start low to high, and then I subtract high to low. And this is going to be all over the denominator squared, so we get cosine squared of x. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this through a little bit. Alrighty, and notice here actually we have an identity in the numerator. So cosine squared x plus sine squared x is actually equal to 1. And all of this is still being divided by cosine squared of x. I can rewrite this one more time because 1 over cosine of x is equal to secant. So this becomes secant squared of x. And so we have the derivative of tangent of x is actually equal to secant squared x. So that's what I have for us today. We had the derivative of sine, cosine, and tangent. Stay tuned for the rest of the trig derivatives. But if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.